Hey, Mr. Richards here. Let's run through these practice problems for Unit 3, Lesson 15, finding this percent of that. To find 40% of 75, Priya calculates 2 fifths times 75. Does her calculation give her the correct value for 40% of 75? Explain or show how you know. And so if we look at number 1 of number 1, 2 fifths, if we look at as a fraction over 100, we can ask ourselves, well, 5 times what is 100? That answer is 20. So 2 times 20 would get us 40 over 100, which is equal to 40%. So yes, if you took 2 fifths times 75, you would get uh, the same thing as 40% of 75. So yes. Number 2. If x represents a number, does 2 fifths times x always represent 40% of that number? And the simple answer here is also yes. In problem 2, Han spent 75 minutes practicing the piano over the weekend. For each question, explain or show your reasoning. Priya practiced the violin for 152% as much time as Han practiced the piano. How long did she practice? Well, one way to do this is to say, well, 152% as a fraction is 152 over the 100. If I multiply that by 75, you would end up with 114 minutes. Number two, Tyler practiced the clarinet for 64% much as Han practiced the piano. How long did he practice? Well, looking at the 64%, this is 64 over 100. And if you multiply that by 75, you would end up with 48 minutes. Question 3. Last Sunday, 1,575 people visited the amusement park. 56% of the visitors were adults, 16% were teenagers, and 28% were children ages 12 and under. Find the number of adults, teenagers, and children that visited the park. Well, if we look at the adults section here, this was 56%. And so one strategy here is to take 56 over 100 and multiply that by 1,575 and you get 938 adults. Another way to solve this is looking at the teenagers here. Let's abbreviate teens. 16% were teenagers. Now, 16% as a decimal is 0 0.16. And if I multiply that by 1,575, it's the same thing as multiplying by 16 over 100, because, wait, 16 over 100 is 16 hundredths, so it's 0 0.16. Either way, you end up with 268 teens. And lastly, we need to look at the children that are 12 and under. Children, children, what do you see? I see a teacher looking at me. That's what happens when you have a two-year-old at home. Anyways, 28% is 28 over 100 or 28 hundredths, either way, right? You're going to take one of those and multiply by 1,575, and you end up with 469 children. Question four, order from greatest to least. That means we have to solve these, huh? 55% of 180. Well, 55 over 100 times 180 is 99. Then let's look at 300% of 26. Well, 300%, if you move that decimal over twice, is 3. So 3 times 26 is equal to 78. And then lastly, 12% of 700. 
Well, let's do 0.12 times 700. Again, showing you the fraction method, showing you the decimal method, that either way you can get to a solution here. Your solution there is uh -oh, 84, maybe, maybe, 84, there we go. Not the prettiest in the world, let me fix that here, because, yeah, I, I, I tend to be a perfectionist sometimes. <laughs> so that's 84. Now, it says greatest to least, which means we need the biggest first, and so that's going to be 99, which is 55% of 180. My next biggest number is that 84 that I struggled so much with, so 12% of 700. And then the smallest was the 78, which was 300% of 26. So my takeaway here is don't just assume that, oh, it's 300%, that's the biggest number. No, find the answers, okay? Find the numbers too. All right, let's move on. Complete each statement. 20% of 60 is blank, 25, okay. So let's look at the first one. 20% of 60. Um, well, we could use the table method, right? You could have your number and you could have the percent. Just kind of interweave some of these things. 60 is the number, 100%. We're trying to get down to 20. How do you do that? You could divide by 5. So if you take 60 and divide it by 5, you would get 12. So 20% of 60 is 12. 25% of blank is 6. Well, let's use the table again. Blank percent. We know 100% is going to be this number. We know the 25% matches the 6. So 25% of this big number is equal to 6. How do I get to 25? Or 25 to 100? You multiply by 4. So 6 times 4 is going to be 24. So my solution here is 24. And there's a real easy way to do blank percent of 100 is 14. It's just 14. And you're dealing with 100. <laughs> Anywho, 50% of 90. Well, 50% is just one half, right? So half a 90 is 45. So fill in 45 there. 10% of blank is 7. See, I really like these table methods for these types of questions. 10% of blank is 7. It's a lot like number, th uh, what was it, 2 there? So we know that the 7 is the 10%. We don't know what this number is, but we know it needs to be the 100% number. So when I multiply by 10 here, 7 times 10 gets me 70. So 10% of 70 is 7. And then 30% of 70 is blank. One more table. Getting hungry thinking about tables, dinner, yum, any who's. We're looking at now 30% of 70 is blank. So 70 is our 100%. 30%. Well, this is one of those where we do need to do a middle step here, like 10%. How do I get there? Divide by 10. Divide the 70 by 10 to get to 7. How do I get from 10 to 30? Multiply by 3. And then 7 times 3 is 21. I don't know if you just looked at this part of the page. It looks like math threw up all over the screen, but hey, that's okay too. Problem six, a shopper needs 24 sandwich rolls. The store sells identical rolls in two differently sized packages. They sell a six pack for 528 and a four pack for 340. Should the shopper buy four six packs or uh, six four packs? Explain your reasoning. Let's go ahead and find the cost for one, right? So if we take $5.28 and 
over 6. And we divide by 6, we get 88 cents for 1. Comparing that then to the 4-pack, $3.40 divided by 4. When you do 340 divided by 4, you get 88 cents for 1. I'm sorry, not 88 cents. That would be the same. My eyes got distracted. How about 85 cents? Well, which is a better buy? This one here at 85 cents. So should the shopper buy four six-packs or six four-packs? Well, the four-packs were cheaper, so I would say six four-packs. And last but not least, on a field trip, there are three chaperones for every 20 students. There are 92 people on the trip. Answer these questions, and if you get stuck, use a tape diagram. Well, three chaperones for every 20 students, right? And so how many chaperones and how many children are there is what we're shooting for here. So if we look at our chaperones as being three and our students being 20, well, if we do another row here, that's 3 and 20, which takes our total from 23 to 46. Add another 3 and 20 here, which takes our total now to 69. Add another row here of 3 and 20, and that's going to take our total to the 92. So how many chaperones are there? 12. How many children are there? 80. That is it for this homework review. Good luck.